Something that I think about all of the time is the lack of interest women seem to have in the world of watches. And I think because the space for watches, especially online, is hugely dominated by men. This doesn't mean there are not millions of women out there who are excruciatingly serious fans of haute allogerie. However, I think that the reason we don't see as many women talking about watches is because we tend to appreciate things from an aesthetic standpoint more than men do. And this doesn't mean men don't appreciate the aesthetics, don't take this the wrong way, but I do think that men tend to focus more on movements and, and little tiny details of pieces, which is of course very interesting and important, but I think maybe women would open up to the idea more of the beauty in the world of watches if they felt welcome to be more feminine in their viewpoints of it. So I wanted to make a video short and sweet going over some beautiful timepieces that I think could inspire a perhaps an interest in watches. Each piece that I'm going to be showing in this video is going to be from a different brand and I'm going to point out a few aesthetic and stylistic points of the watch, why, what makes it special in my opinion, and I'd like to spread that interest to other women out there. Something to note is that the very first wristwatch was uh, designed by Louis Bourget. It was actually made from a pocket watch and uh, pieced together with bracelets to make a wristwatch and it was for a woman, believe it or not. In 1810, the iconic Grand de Naples was created for Carolina Marat, Actually, she is Napoleon Bonaparte's sister. The beauty, artistry, and quality of the Renzo Napoli has actually stood the test of time, and even today, it is one of the most, you know, it is the crown jewel of Breguet. That's what I would say. Before I show you the first piece I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show you my watch, my favorite watch in my collection, which is quite a small collection, but it is growing slowly and surely. I'm wearing a very iconic piece by Cartier, and this is actually, believe it or not, a men's watch. This is the Cartier Ballon Bleu. I'm going to have to forgive the ring light that is going to reflect on it, but this has a chocolate dial, which is a brown dial. The Princess of Wales actually wears a Cartier Ballon Bleu. I believe hers is stainless steel. This is a 42 millimeter. This is a big watch. Ladies, you can wear large watches. They don't have to all be Dainty. I know actually when I first started getting into watches, one thing I didn't like about watches, women's watches that is, is I didn't like very small pieces. I don't know what it was, but it just didn't do it for me. I am actually very much changing my views on that because the more I look at these pieces, the more I fall in love and the more I understand just the preciousness of these pieces and the dainty elegance, it's something that only females, only feminine females can really pull off in such a special way and it cannot be replicated. And now that we're on the topic of Cartier, my first piece I decided to talk to you about in order to inspire you is the Cartier Panther. The Cartier Panther comes in multiple styles and different types of gold. Rose gold is something I absolutely love. It's a pinkish tone gold. There's also yellow gold, which is stunning. It's a bright pop of really true gorgeous gold. We have stainless steel, we have white gold. There are many options. The Cartier Panther is something that is one to me, one of the most iconic Cartier pieces, because even though when you look at it, it reminds me of the Santos, the Cartier Santos, which is actually the first wrist, allegedly, the first wristwatch that was designed for a man to wear, and that was in 1904, I believe, so that was many years after the first women's watch. So clearly watches are for the girls, they really are, no, I'm just joking. They are for everybody, but the Panther is very reminiscent in my eyes, the, what I see of the Santos. It's very structured, and it gives a very regal look. Um, but the panther to me looks a little bit more like jewelry, which is why I like it because I love it to shine, sparkle, and just melt into the beauty of the rest of what you're wearing and your looks in general. I'm a big fan of bracelets on a watch. I prefer them over straps, uh, leather straps and bands. Personally, that's my preference because like I was saying, I look at it from a stylistic standpoint. I look at haute allogerie, kind of like haute jewelry. To me, my watches are my jewelry. They are my accessory, but there's just something very special about 
not just the dual purpose of a watch, I mean, there are many purposes, but the time that went into creating it. And yeah, it's just beautiful. Use of the Panther as a symbol for Cartier dates back to the early 1900s. So this has been around for a long time. So to me, this piece is just special because the Panther is, the Panther is kind of what embodies the brand. It's bold, but it's also sleek. It's mysterious, like a cat is mysterious. There's a lot of wonderful, iconic women and men who have worn the Panther in the past because it is quite versatile. You know, you don't just have to wear a watch that says for a man, for a woman. But what I like about this is that it comes in different sizes. So if you are a dainty watch wearer or you prefer smaller pieces, you can get a smaller size, less millimeters, okay? Or if you prefer a bigger piece, you can go for a bigger size. The prices range on this. Um, I'm not really getting into prices so much in this video, actually, not at all, because I don't want you to think about this from a price standpoint and just be turned off to it because it's expensive. It's not about the cost. It's not about the flashiness. It's about the history, the art, the craftsmanship, and just, it's like having your own little world on your wrist, your own little world that belongs to you. And you will understand this once you try on a beautiful watch and fall in love with it. The next piece I'm going to talk to you about is the Piaget Limelight Gala Watch. This piece emerged in the 1970s and it is actually named after the famous parties that the brand, the Maison of Piaget, would throw for celebrities, artists, and friends. Of the Maison. To me, what says femininity about this watch is the strip of diamonds that you will see that are just wrapping around the bezel on both sides. This to me feels very curvaceous, like a woman's figure. This is a nice way to give a watch a special and memorable look without doing too much and being too flashy. Men have also been spotted wearing this piece. Somebody that you're probably very familiar with, a pop culture icon, even though I may not personally be a big fan, but The weekend, The weekend, He was spotted wearing a just completely encrusted diamond Piaget limelight gala watch at the Cannes Film Festival and on the red carpet. And to me, even though it's just such a feminine watch, he has a very masculine presence on this, in this look, you know, the way he's coming across. And it's just this one sparkle on his wrist. It's it's a lot. It is a lot to look at. But at the same time, like, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. If I saw that on a woman, however, in a gorgeous gown, I would just be... I would melt. That is just such a perfect piece of jewelry to accompany a gorgeous gown on a gorgeous woman. The next piece on your dream list, your inspiration board, is the Gégé Le Croute Reverso in pink gold. This is the classic duetto. This truly is a breathtaking, feminine, and in my opinion, a mesmerizing watch. You may find that this dainty piece still shocks you with its enormous presence. The hallmark of this piece is the verso dial, which basically gives you two watches in one. Both pieces are equally stunning and unique. The verso dial has a striking black opaline sunburst guilloche, as well as 30 diamonds. The recto dial is a silvered gray with a vertical satin brushed guilloche and very straightforward numerals. That is probably one thing that if I could change anything about this piece, who am I to say this, is the numbers, they are, they're very simple. That's okay, I do like them simple. Maybe the font I would have chosen different, I don't know, it's hard to say. I like it, it looks good, okay? To be honest, this is one of my grail pieces, something that I, really really want for myself in my collection believe it or not i am not crazy about diamonds too many diamonds on my watch but on the verso dial i actually really like it because once in a while i might be in the mood for something like that and i can turn it around it's just very precious the gg le couture verso is no secret matter this is a very well loved watch you can see this on many different celebrities and artists throughout time, different models of it. And it is also no secret as to why. This piece is not only timeless and classy, it is dainty enough for a woman, yet it is also structured enough to complement your masculine side or as a man, just your masculinity in general. And honestly, this bracelet just glitters in such a way that 
really comes across as jewelry to me, especially from a distance. And even though I am partial to the classic with the pink gold, there are many different variations of it that you may find even more stunning in your personal opinion. Be sure to dig a little deeper on the reverse zone. Don't sleep on it. This is one of one of the most beautiful watches I've ever seen, honestly, because of the simplicity, the simplicity and cleverness of it. It's just everything. Last but not least, I am going to show you the Omega Constellation. The Omega Constellation line has been around since the early 1950s, but the generation I'm showing you is their fifth generation where the design is modernized a lot without sacrificing that timeless elegance. The constellation got its name from the emblem on the case back, which showed an observatory with eight stars above it. If you're curious, the eight stars symbolize two chronometer records and six first place awards that Amiga earned between 1933 and 1952. Also, it is so beautiful to look at. And that is just the back of this watch. Amongst some of the current ambassadors for the Omega brand, Cindy Crawford and her beautiful daughter, Kaya Gerber, these women, there are, trust me, there are other ambassadors that are equally stunning, but these two women, I feel, really just embody the class and warmth that Omega brings and kind of a surprising um, personality that these watches have. Honestly, though, this picture, they remind me of Bambi, just deers, just, they're just so beautiful and warm and... They're just perfect ambassadors for these pieces, honestly, I have to say that. The piece that I'm showing you here is a 25 millimeter, little tiny, dainty piece with yellow gold on yellow gold. The dial is a dreamlike white mother of pearl with diamond hour markers. The details of this watch are what makes it so dreamy, okay? To me, the Omega Constellation is so dreamy. Not only the beautiful Constellation Star, which is also 18K yellow gold, but the details of the Diamond Hour holders are also 18K yellow gold. So they really pop. When you look into this piece, it's like staring into a sky full of stars. It's just like a fantasy to look into it. Personally, I don't prefer the bezel that is surrounded by the diamonds, the diamond bezel. It, to me, might be just a little bit too blingy even though it's not and honestly as jewelry as a jewelry piece if you were to think of it as old jewelry it's absolutely acceptable i think just for me that's not my cup of tea but at the end of the day <laughs> if i had that on i think i would absolutely fall in love with it diamond bezel and all i guess i could make an exception out of all the pieces i showed you today let me know what your favorite was down below i'm so curious on what inspired you and if you're interested in more watch content ladies or gentlemen watching let me know in the comments below i am truly just going to be coming at this topic from my stylistic and aesthetic standpoint and with an audience of females i think talking about watches from that standpoint may make more of a difference in inspiring you to learn more about this beautiful world um, versus talking about all the technicalities you know i'm not an engineer again i don't want to belittle any of that stuff because it's all so important incredibly important but you know it's okay to like things because they simply are beautiful. I just think sometimes we need to understand a little bit more about what makes something special and I'd love to talk more about that so let me know what you think down below. Thank you again for watching today and I will see you all in the next video.